Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. We're now well into August, and this is the time of year where people start to think more of severe weather, especially hurricanes. And when it comes to those and other kinds of natural disasters, it definitely pays to be prepared ahead of time. Because we see the same thing every year. People are going about their normal everyday lives, and then they hear that a hurricane or something else is headed their way. Next thing you know, them along with everybody else is out ransacking supermarkets and hardware stores trying to find things like food, water, batteries, generators, and plywood. So today we're going to be talking about things that you can do to be more prepared for those types of weather situations. And even if you don't have hurricanes where you live, then that's fine because a lot of this stuff is going to be applicable to other kinds of natural disasters as well. For example, no matter what you're dealing with, you're going to need basic essentials like food and water stored in your home. And while most of us will have plenty of long-term food storage consisting of things like dry beans and rice for hurricanes, it's also a good idea to have some easy-to-prepare non-perishables also. These can include things like peanut butter, dried fruits, nuts, jerky, crackers, canned fruits, and even though a lot of these don't have as long of a shelf life as your dedicated food storage, they can still be very useful. For example, they'll get you through the storm when you don't want to be cooking outside because of the wind and the rain. And in general, cooking outdoors is probably going to be your best bet in the aftermath of a hurricane. First of all, if you cook outdoors, you don't have to worry about further increasing the temperature inside of your home. It's also going to reduce some fire risk. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you have infants or anybody else in your family with special dietary needs, you do want to have some food set aside for them as well. When it comes to water during a hurricane, having things like bottled water and portable containers would be very beneficial because these are already inside, they're easy to use, and they're ready to go. For bulk storage, you could use something like an aquapod or a water bob. These are sort of bathtub liners that you can use to greatly increase the amount of water that you have stored in your home, and it'll also help keep that water clean, keep it separate from any chemicals or gross stuff that's in your tub, and also prevent things like mosquitoes from nesting inside of it. Another thing that you'll need to prepare for a hurricane is a reliable power source, and historically people have used a gas generator for this, but those do have some drawbacks. First, you have to use those outdoors and at a safe distance from your home because of the risk of things like fires and carbon monoxide poisoning. In addition, running a generator in the rain can put you at risk of electrical shock meaning that you're going to need to wait for the rain to pass before you can wheel your generator out and start using it. The capabilities of solar generators, on the other hand, have increased dramatically in the past several years, and they're now a viable option if you want a reliable power source to get you through a natural disaster. I'll be using the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max to show how you could use one, and I'd like to thank EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. Now, one of the biggest issues with power stations is that they have a finite capacity, and once that's depleted, you have to recharge it. But there's a lot of options out there, like this Delta 2 Max, that are expandable. So with this and one extra battery, it can power my refrigerator and my box freezer for 19 hours straight with no input. But if I was just trying to power my freezer, which is what I would probably do during a real emergency, then it could power it for days. And since this can last for such a long period of time, my personal gas generator has been relegated to backup duties. So say there's a situation where I'm dealing with a lot of cloud cover, I can't really use solar panels to charge this up, I'll just hook it up to my old gas generator and it should be able to recharge this by itself in a little over an hour or this and an extra battery in a little over two hours. So that's going to help stretch out my fuel storage, allowing it to last for a much longer period of time, since I'm only going to be running that generator for a couple hours at a time. Solar power stations are also a better option than many gas generators when it comes to charging sensitive electronics. The AC outlets on devices like this are pure sine wave, which means that they produce kind of a more stable power than something like the outlets on a traditional gas generator, which may fluctuate. So this makes solar generators a perfect choice for charging up cell phones or other devices that may have sensitive electrical components like flashlights and radios. And when it comes to these smaller devices, I prefer to use rechargeable batteries whenever possible. Some things have their own rechargeable lithium ion batteries, but I also keep rechargeable AA, AAA, and D cells on hand for other devices. USB battery banks are also good to have around since you can use them to top off small devices without having to plug those devices directly into the power station. They just kind of give you a more portable option to use if, say, this is 
power in your fridge or your box freezer, you can have that USB battery bank with you while this is doing that. Now EcoFlow is running various hurricane preparedness offers from now until September 27th where you can save up to nearly $1,500. And you can find those using the links in the description below along with this code to get an extra 5% off everything except the flash sale items. EcoFlow has also stepped up their customer service with Disaster Care where you can get support 24 seven, 45 day returns and free device repair. But another thing to keep in mind is that in the aftermath of a hurricane, it's probably gonna be hot and humid, especially if you live somewhere in the South. And I did a video recently showing ways that you can stay cool during a summer power outage, but one option I didn't show was the EcoFlow Wave 2, and it is a big step up from the swamp cooler that I did show in that video. The Wave 2 is a portable air conditioner that can run on battery power, and it could be very useful to have if you're in a situation where you have a prolonged power outage during the summer or early fall where it's still pretty warm. On eco mode, you should be able to get around seven or eight hours of runtime using its add-on battery, but you can also power this using one of EcoFlow's power stations, specifically things like the Delta II and Delta Max, which have an expandable capacity. A Delta II can provide up to seven hours of runtime, while a Delta Max can keep it running for 14. But when dealing with a device like this, you want to keep a couple things in mind. First of all, this is not going to cool your entire house. It can cool something like a room, like a window AC will. And also, the runtime that you get will depend on different circumstances. So, for example, if you're running this thing full blast, trying to cool a room down to 60 degrees when it's 90 outside, it's probably not going to last as long as, you know, what the company says it will. But, on the other hand, if you're just using the fan mode on this to try to get some air circulation, then it could last for a much longer period of time. Like EcoFlow power stations, you can recharge the Wave 2 battery from a wall outlet, solar panels, or the 12 volt outlet in your car. But if you want to run this off of solar power or the 12 volt port in your car, you will need to be sure to either order it with a battery or have one of the power stations that I mentioned a second ago. The Wave 2 also comes with all the hoses and adapters that you'll need to vent exhaust outside of your home, but you can also set it up for tent camping as well where the main unit sits outside the tent and uses one of the hoses to blow cool air into the tent. During the winter months, it can also be used as a heater, but you'll only get around three hours of runtime for that. Now, if you plan on using a device like this heavily or you're using a solar generator with like maybe some larger appliances, you're definitely gonna need to maximize the amount of solar energy that you can collect. The most obvious way to do this is to plug as many solar panels into your device as you can. So the Delta II Max, for example, can handle 1000 watts of solar input, and it also has two separate input ports for that. So what that means is that technically you could use solar panels of different sizes as long as the different sizes are connected into those two different ports. So if you're somebody like me who has solar panels that they've gotten for different things, that could be very useful. Another way that you could go about doing that is by using a solar angle guide like this one. It'll help you make sure that your solar panels are set up in the optimum way to receive the most amount of sunlight. And it just clips right onto your solar panels and then you can move them around until the shadow is just right in the middle of this little device. Using something like that is a lot better than just trying to eyeball it. And you can use it throughout the day to match your panels with the sun's position. The next thing you need to have to be prepared for a hurricane is different first aid and medical items. So basic first aid items can be things like assorted bandages of different sizes and be sure that when you get those you go beyond just the normal band-aids. Be sure to get some larger gauze pads as well. You also want to have some antiseptics and some triple antibiotic ointment that you can use to prevent wounds from becoming infected. Also have basic over-the-counter medications like pain relievers and fever reducers and anything that you could use to treat different stomach ailments, things like Pepto and Imodium, because in some sort of kind of grid down situation, stomach problems are going to become much more likely. If you have kids, pick up medications for them as well, because even if it's the same active ingredient as what would be used to treat an adult, the formulation of those medications is different. And if you have anybody in your household who needs prescription medications, 
try to have some extra of that on hand also so that if pharmacies get knocked out, you'll at least kind of have a running start. Next thing you need to do to prepare for a hurricane is take steps to protect your home. And that's true whether you're going to be staying or you're going to be bugging out. So some good places to start are going to be your doors and your windows. For your windows, you can do things like install storm shutters. And if you can't afford those, then go ahead and pick up some plywood now and pre-cut it. And that is something you want to do ahead of time because plywood is going to get scooped up very, very quickly. Quickly. And if you already have it pre-cut and ready to install, that'll allow you to get out of Dodge quicker if you need to. Another thing you want to do is trim any trees that are near your house because that'll reduce the chances of like a limb breaking loose or an entire tree falling down on it. And if you know that a storm is headed your way, take any patio furniture, kids toys, or other things like garden tools that you keep outside and put those in like your garage or a storage shed so that those winds will have less projectiles to fling at your home. And then as far as protecting stuff inside of your home you can make use of things like plastic totes stick them on a high shelf so if things start to flood they'll be kind of out of the way and if water leaks down on top of them then that container will protect them you can also use cinder blocks to elevate different kinds of furniture and appliances so that if maybe it's not severe flooding they'll at least be a little bit protected also things like plastic sheeting can be useful for covering furniture and if you have any pictures or documents that you want to keep safe but you can't take with you, then you can always use a Mylar bag and a plastic bucket the same way that you would store food to store those other items as well. Another thing you need to have for hurricanes is an evacuation plan. Go ahead and start thinking of red lines that if this thing happens, me and my family are getting out of here because you don't really want to be put in a situation where you start dealing with analysis paralysis, where you have a lot of information coming at you at once. You want to be ahead of the curve and out of town before everybody else. And y'all remember, sometimes the safest thing that you can do is get out of town. If you live within the distance of the storm surge and you know a Cat 5 is headed somewhere near you, you really don't want to stay around for that because there's not much you can do. Also, be sure to have multiple predetermined routes out of town written on a map and also have a predetermined destination in mind. Maybe that could be somewhere like a friend or relative's house or a hotel that's in you know a safe distance away from where you live but you do not want to end up in a refugee camp because historically those have not been good places to be. And another thing to remember when it comes to evacuations is to have your vehicle well maintained. Always keep at least half a tank of gas in it. Also, make sure your oil changes are up to date. You have good tires on your vehicle. Then also keep other things in your car that you could use to keep it running. So, of course, a spare tire. A lot of cars aren't coming with those nowadays. So if you don't have one, get one. Also, other things like battery jump packs, jumper cables, and then also something like an empty gas can stored in your vehicle at all times could be useful. Maybe you're in a situation where you're out and about, you realize you may not be able to get gas soon, but you can get gas now. You can go ahead, top up your vehicle, fill up that gas can, and you'll have it with you if you need it. You also want to have your important documents organized and ready to go. So the most obvious examples of those are going to be identification, things like your driver's license, social security card, your passport, and then also other things like your insurance information, and that's insurance for different things, your house, your health insurance, car insurance. And especially when it comes to your house, be sure that you know exactly what your insurance policy will cover. Because a lot of times after hurricanes, people's houses are damaged, they try to file a claim, and then insurance company is like, oh wait, doesn't cover that, and you look at the policy, and it doesn't. Also have any important phone numbers for loved ones, because you may be in a situation where you lose your cell phone, or you're not able to power it up if you have those phone numbers written down on something like a right in the rain pad, then you could still make those calls if somebody else has a phone or you can use a public phone somewhere. Pictures of loved ones both on your phone and then also as physical copies are good to have in case you get separated and then also have plenty of cash with you as well. 
you may find yourself in a situation where power is out in stores and you need to make some purchases. Credit card obviously won't work in that kind of situation. And if they're accepting any business, it'll be done through cash. Now, if you're in a situation where you know that either a storm or some other disaster is headed your way, there are some other things that you want to have taken care of. And you can find those by checking out this video. And I'd also like to thank EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.